Good morning. It may be evening now that you're watching this, or afternoon, or the middle of the night, but right this minute, on my beach here, on my beach, <laughs> the public beach, um, it's another very early morning, and before I get to my desk to resume various different chart works and editing the astrological journal, I thought I'd come down on the beach. There so you can see behind me, low tide again. It seems to be permanent low tide at the moment. Um, I thought I'd uh, address the subject of Dominic Cummings, the man of the moment. Um, will he will he survive and all that stuff? Um, I'm not going to make any specific forecasts, but I, I'm interested in the astrology here. Um, if I was asked to do a full analysis of his chart, then I'd have to spend a couple of days going through various different systems. But there are all little things that we can do. And I thought I'd return to the lunar eclipse that's going to occur on the 5th of June of 2020, because it's particularly relevant to his chart, almost uncannily so, actually. And um, I would say that he needs to be careful. Um, astrology supports the idea that he's in trouble. Um, now, the thing about his chart is that he, he is a kind of a mega Sagittarian, would you believe? He's got five planets in Sagittarius. That's like a super conjunction. In astrology, we call that a stellium. Uh, there's a word for you, stellium. And um, we tend to associate Sagittarians with joviality, don't we? Almost full staff, people who run bustiously, sort of rage through life, getting drunk, and uh, reading learned treatises when they're not partying. That's at least the stereotype. But of course, in astrology, <laughs> things are never that straightforward. The problem he's got in his chart, it's not a problem, it's more like a challenge, really, is that this stellium in Sagittarius, which of course includes his sun and Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius, so that's a very, very good Jupiter. Um, very good for learning, very good for intelligence and all the rest of it. But the problem is, this super conjunction is opposed by Saturn in Gemini. The challenge of an opposition, of course, is to kind of synthesize different energies, to come to terms in a way. And if you don't, then with Saturn, what can happen is that a certain severity um, is introduced. Or alternatively, one has to deal with the realities of situation as against what you think is going on in life. And with Dominic Cummings being such a Sagittarian with these five planets, there will be a great focus on high-mindedness, philosophy, being driven by ideas. And um, there's no question that such an extraordinary concentration of energy presents him both with great energy and strength. And we've seen that with his Brexit, Brexit successes, with his ability to win Boris Johnson the general election. His ability to, in a sense, rise above the fray and see things that other people cannot see. Supported by Mars in Pisces, which um, drives his um, ability to get into the zeitgeist, to go with the flow of things. And also, from memory, I think he's got Moon in Pisces in the early degree, maybe the first degree, or even just beyond zero degree, a few minutes in. So that gives him an extraordinary sensitivity and probably also explains his prickliness. Um, now, coming to the question of the lunar eclipse on the 5th of June, the problem we've got here is that the moon will be in Sagittarius. We've established that a, a lunar eclipse is a, a sun-moon opposition. So the moon is sitting in Sagittarius directly on top of his Jupiter. And um, the sun will be down in Gemini. Um, not conjunct his Saturn, but certainly in the same sign. And this, I think, introduces a problem. Gemini sometimes, as Tim Burness has pointed out, the astrologer, Gemini is known as the low intelligence. Well, that's not true. I'm a Gemini. Am I low intelligence? I'm, you know, I'm asking that question. But it's kind of associated with low forms of communication, which could be the media. Um, whereas uh, Sagittarius is all high-minded and everything. But there is another complication with this lunar eclipse, since it's tapping his um, Sagittarian stellium and his Saturn Gemini, is Mars. Because in this lunar eclipse, it forms what we call a T-square with Mars in Pisces. 
and a t-square tends to be a tense aspect in other words something needs to be resolved because they're under a lunar eclipse there's a culmination a crisis something like that and um, the transiting Mars in Pisces will only be about four or five degrees away from his birth Mars in Pisces um, Mars in a sense is the planet that can help resolve the problems that Mr. Cummings finds himself in but it may not result in an outcome that he particularly welcomes. Mars in Pisces actually is quite a good place. It's in its triplicity because Mars co-rules Scorpio, a water sign like Pisces. We like when we have these elemental matches. It means the energies are flowing together. But the thing about Mars in Pisces is at its best, the energies, the aggressive and dynamic energies of Mars should be directed towards helping the underdog towards using one's psychic or intuitive faculties to get to the heart of a problem. And the whole T-square, this lunar ecliptic T-square, is immutable signs. In other words, maximum flexibility, the need to go with the flow, these are the requirements of this particular pattern. So what does that mean in reality? Well, I, I'm going to speak in very specific terms. If Mr. Cummings thinks that he's going to get out of this problem by remaining fixed, by saying, I've spoken to the public, I've explained myself, and I'm not going anywhere, that's probably not the answer. He needs to be thinking about the public, what the public want from him, and it may very well be that the lunar eclipse will bring to the surface either facts or the whole situation in a rather explosive way, which requires him to act in a manner which he may find uncomfortable, but which actually helps to resolve the problem, both for him and for the, the country. It's interesting too that, um, that Boris also will be affected by the lunar eclipse. We will all be affected by it to some extent. And um, it will be interesting to see that, uh, that Boris Johnson's Saturn is in Pisces. Mars is not that far away from uh, that's the, the transiting Mars is not far away from his Saturn. So there may be a sense of powerlessness with Boris Johnson, as if events are moving in a way that he cannot wholly control. That's one interpretation. I should point out that there may be much more to this that uh, would be revealed in a further analysis. But remember what I said last time about lunar eclipses. Um, if, uh, if you don't actually see something happening around the lunar eclipse, there will have been a build-up to a situation, we see the build-up at the moment, then um, look to see what happens within the next six months. And it may be that within the next six months, matters reach another kind of conclusion if they've not been resolved around the 5th of June. Anyway, that's my take on Dominic Cummings, and not everyone will be happy with some of the uh, preliminary conclusions that I've reached. Um, but it's always interesting to see um, astrology in action, particularly when it quite literally matches our understanding of events. And on that note, you were talking about Mars in Pisces. Well, Victor's in Pisces is by the sea, ruled by Neptune here. Um, it's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, I keep saying that, beautiful. I need to find new adjectives and stuff. And the rocks here, look, rocks, rocks, rocks. Actually, I say rocks, but those are, that's, the, that's the beach. All the storms early this year dragged out the stones and we now have a rather rocky beach, rocky sands. Anyway, I hope you um, enjoyed this little broadcast and hope to see you soon. Thank you for listening.